Hi, I'm Shane, Product Development Engineer with Erskine Attachments. Today I'd like to show the features and benefits of our front mount 725 tractor snowblower. The snowblower is best suited for tractors of 35 to 65 horsepower and uses a 540 input speed. The shipping weight of the snowblower body with frame is approximately 1,450 pounds. The snowblower body has a cutting width of 78 inches. The snowblower comes standard with hydraulic lift and hydraulic chute rotate with optional hydraulic deflector. I'd like to start by showing some of the features on the front side of the snowblower, starting with the auger. Here we have the 16 inch diameter open flighting. And the reason we use open flighting is because it does a really good job of moving a high volume of snow with the least amount of horsepower. It also does a good job of not plugging. This auger is driven on the left side by a chain that's inside of an enclosed case. The reason we do that is because it protects the chain from damage. Sometimes if you're working in an unknown area where you have possible debris, the debris can get caught in the chain and sometimes break it. So having the chain inside the enclosed case prevents the possibility of that happening and keeps you from having downtime. The 24 inch diameter fan consists of four fan blades that are 3 8 inch plate steel. They're fully gusseted and welded to a back plate. And you'll notice that the fan has an open center to maximize flow. The fan is housed inside of a spin formed wrapper. This one piece wrapper gives us the best consistency. So we have a really consistent size and shape. So the fan has a consistent fit. And that gives you the best efficiency when it comes to blowing snow. On the bottom of the body, we have a 5 8 by 6 inch medium carbon cutting edge that is reversible. The cutting edge sits flat on the ground, much like a bucket cutting edge does. So this gives you a, a wide surface area so that you get the best wear characteristics. But the fact that the blower head can be tilted fore and aft a little bit, you can change those characteristics. So if you roll the, the blower head forward a little bit, you can get more bite and more cutting. If you want to do more of a float, effect you can roll the blower ba body back. So I want to talk about the chute design. We have a lot of different features that goes into making a really good chute. Starting with the rollers. The roller design is something that Erskine's developed over 70 years of trial and error. The size and shape of these rollers are intended to keep the chute from freezing up. That's their main purpose. Um, you'll notice that we have a very concise rolled chute base and then it fits snugly into the roller itself. We have three rollers that are greasable. And the whole purpose of this shape is to prevent ice from caking on and keeping the chute from moving. On top of that, we're using a roller chain that gives the best strength ratio for the torque needed to turn the chute. It's flexible, it's easy to use, and it's easy to replace if you ever need to do that. Moving up from there, we have an 11 inch chute base and the reason we use such a large chute is to help prevent the chute from plugging. There's going to be times in certain areas and certain times of the year when you have sh snow that's very sticky. Typically when it's warmer, um, that snow has a tendency to plug. But if you have a larger chute diameter, the base of that chute will be open most of the time and keep the snow from plugging. Moving up a little further, we'll talk about the chute front. This plate of steel here, if you look at it from the side, is actually canted back a few degrees. And the reason we do that is to take the snow that's at the front side of the chute that might have lower speed, lower energy, and inject that back into the high speed, high energy flow pattern of the snow. That'll take that snow and get it out further from the blower. The back of the chute has a gentle curve to it. We've picked this ratio of height to curve to give the best performance and the best pattern of the, of the snow leaving the chute. If you have a really short chute, the problem there is that the curve has to be really aggressive and then the acceleration of the snow tends to break it apart and you don't get a really nice tight pattern. On the top we have the deflector. We have four different pin positions to give you uh, four different casting distances. If you're in an open area like a field, you typically use it all the way up and that'll give you the maximum casting distance. If you're in an area such as a residential area, you might want to cast it less far, so then you just tip it down a couple notches. On the front side of the frame, I wanted to point out a few features. Here you can see the twin cylinders that lift the blower head. They're mounted to the front of the frame with a, a float linkage. So uh, the reason we do that is so that the blower head can still float even when it's in the down position. If you go over an uneven terrain, the blower head will follow that terrain. We lock those in place when it comes time to 
uh, install or detach the frame from the tractor. We have a drive line at the front side that connects the drive shaft that runs the full length of the frame to the front shaft. This is a through shaft that goes all the way to the fan and we have a bevel gear here that drives the auger off to the left side. There's a shear bolt in the auger drive so that if the auger ever gets hung up on something and stops, you won't break the chain. It should shear the bolt and it's really easy to change. On the front of the tractor here, you can see the mounting plate. This plate is drilled and bolted to the front frame of the tractor and it has two pins on it. They engage the front side of the frame of the snowblower. So this frame then is hung by these two pins and this is the point where when you uh, drive into or attach the blower frame at the beginning of the season, you can raise and lower this with the hydraulics until you engage the pins. Here on the back side of the tractor, you can see where the two standard hydraulic circuits hook into the hydraulics of the tractor. You can also see the chain case. This is the part that, of the transmission that takes the power from the drive line and the PTO of the tractor and transmits it at a given ratio down to the solid shaft which runs from the back all the way up to the front of the frame. The frame itself is very stout. It's made up of two by three inch rectangular tubes. There's two of them. Uh, they're made in sections that bolt together so that they can be telescoped uh, forward and backwards to fit different lengths of tractor frames. When you mount these on the tractor, you're going to want to try to maximize your ground clearance. So you want to watch uh, the clearances between the frame and the bottom of the tractor. Typically, we, we can get between 6 to 10 inches of clearance, which is really good. The frame also is adjustable where it mounts to the drawbar. So you can move that point fore and aft, up and down. The main drive line here also has a shear bolt in it. This will protect the fan and the entire system from over torque. We've designed our front mount snowblower system to be pushed from the drawbar of the tractor. That's why we're using such large components in the frame itself. We don't want to be pushing from the front end of the tractor frame. We want all that force to come back and be transmitted through the drawbar because the rear end of the tractor is typically the strongest part of the frame. So we make this frame system to be universal. So it's kind of a one size fits most. Uh, we're able to change the length to match a wide variety of different tractor sizes. The way the system is built uh, makes it very simple to take on and off the tractor. Typically takes less than five minutes to dismount or remount the blower once you have the frame set up for your specific tractor. At the rear end what happens is after you disconnect the drive line, you can loosen the chain case here and tip it to its side in order to back over it when you disengage from the frame. Be sure to check back as we make more videos like this. As always, give us a call or check out our website if you have any questions.